Hi guys, Barnaby here for Spurred On and it's time for another top five. Now I was thinking, what can I do a top five on today? Well, it's all about to dare is to do with Spurs, isn't it? It's about playing the game the right way and it's about having flair. It's about producing some magic on the pitch. So today, I'm telling you my top five Tottenham flair players. At number five, I'm talking about two men, I'm cheating. Two Argentinians, the Argentinians that we had before Eric Lamella, and I'm talking about the signings we made in 1978 of Ozzy Ardiles and Ricky Villa. Ozzy Ardiles, club legend, went on to manage the, manage the club, not particularly well, but more importantly, on the pitch, oh, he was a genius, he was silk personified. Meanwhile, Ricky Villa, hairy, beardy, but on the pitch, 1981 cup final replay, Manchester City dribbles it past six uh, players, puts it in the back of the net, runs away, going absolutely ballistic for one of the greatest FA Cup goals ever. So what I'm saying is, Ozzy Ardiles, Ricky Villa, all the way from Argentina, don't worry about the Falklands War and going on loan to Loftus Road, uh, Ozzy, we just loved you for your flair. Number five, Ricky and Ozzy. At number four in my top five flair players for Tottenham, I've got Chrissy Waddle. Now guys, if you're young, if you're the YouTube generation and you've never watched Chris Waddle play for Spurs, just type him in, Chris Waddle, Tottenham Hotspur. You will see a left winger with some of the greatest skill you will ever see on a football pitch. He was so laissez-faire, he was so laid back. He did not care what was going on around him. Did he ever track back? Did he hell. But a left foot with the power to do anything he wanted. It was a wand and that is a, a phrase used far too lightly. Chris Waddle, he had a drop of the shoulder, he had a step over, he had anything he wanted. He scored some goals in 1988-89 on the VHS goals galore that I used to watch that were from some of the tightest angles I've ever seen on a football pitch. He came from Newcastle, he helped Paul Gascoigne settle in when he was playing for us and England and he scored an amazing amount of goals for Spurs. Guys, just look him up, and not only on YouTube as Tottenham, uh, Chris Waddle for Tottenham, but also Chris Waddle when he went to Marseille. He went for four and a half million, our highest ever sale at the time. He scored one back heel on the goal line that is just taking the piss so badly that it shows you exactly what kind of a player he was. An absolute legend for Tottenham and England, number four, Chris Waddle. Number three, there can be only one, David Ginola, because he is worth it. Now guys, some of you may even be too young to remember what Ginola was like for Spurs, but he scored one of the greatest FA Cup goals ever for us against Barnsley at Oakwell, where he took it on the left wing, drop of the shoulder, drop of the shoulder, round two players, placed it in the right-hand corner, and then ran off, whipped his shirt off, showed us his torso, his abs. What a player. I also recommend you look at some of the goals he scored against, uh, one against Sheffield Wednesday, left foot, round the, round the, uh, round the defenders into the far left-hand corner, and against Leeds on the volley in a cup game, in a game where Darren Anderson also scored an absolute cracker. David Ginola, he came to us when we weren't really known for playing well and for having flair players. It was the George Graham era and he really was the best player on the park. I know people who support Spurs because of David Ginola. He wore number 14, he had to wear that terrible pony kit but he rose above it and he won a League Cup whilst at the lane as well. So at number three in the flair players list, there's only one David Ginola. Okay, at number two in the flair players for Tottenham top five, this is really tough because number two and number one are just both absolute legends. But at number two, I've gone for Paul Gascoigne. Now, what can I say about Gazza that I haven't said before? Honestly, I spent the majority of my childhood clambering around the bushes behind the goal in my garden because I was trying to recreate the 1991 FA Cup semi-final free kick and I never could because I wasn't good enough. But Gazza was a ball player like no other. Not only was he, you know, able to do anything he wanted on the pitch, but that kind of, it's weird to say, but that kind of level of mental instability that he had meant that he would try things that no other player would even dare try. He'd sit on the football, he'd rip the piss out the opponents, but when it came to it for Spurs and for England, he, for Spurs, he basically got us to that 91 Cup final all on his own against Notts County, he scored a hat-trick. We were struggling in loads of games. He scored the goal against Arsenal in the semi-final. He won us that cup pretty much on his own, despite the fact he got injured trying to take out Gary Charles in like the 12th minute of the final. As well as that for England, 1990 World Cup, the Cruyff turn against Holland. He had me crying in that World Cup. He basically taught me what it was to support football properly. And for that, he will always be a legend in my eyes, despite all the negativity, despite his alcohol issues. What a player on the pitch. If you haven't seen it, check him out. Some of his highlights, absolutely crazy. The goal for England against Scotland in Euro 96, unbelievable. And then the dentist chair afterwards.
So at number two, it's Paul Gascoigne. Okay, and at number one in the top five Tottenham Hotspur Flair players, I've already said Gaza, I've already said Waddle, I've said Aussie, I've said Ricky Villa. Who else is left? Glenn Hoddle. What a man. Forget about diamond lights, forget about the mullet, just some of the goals that he scored. In his last appearance for Tottenham, when he was playing at home against, I uh, can't remember who it was against, but he ran the length of the pitch, dummied the keeper, slotted it home for his last game. The chip against Watford, the volley against Manchester United. Just look up these things on YouTube. Glenn Hoddle was the most gifted footballer ever to pull on the Tottenham shirt. You can, you can doubt me if you want. Feel free to say in the comments below if you think you disagree with that. But he could do things with a football that no one else could do. He was underrated for his country. He should have played more times for England. And I think he did still play like 70 times, but they never made a whole team around him. When he played for Spurs, he was the linchpin. He did, everything went through him. He was an unbelievable footballer. Also a talented manager. He didn't do well enough at Spurs. He was unlucky. It was almost like it was too good to be true. But at England, the last good England team we had was under Glenn Hoddle. He got them playing a good 3-5-2 and he played it in the style that he knew that he would have liked. He learned, I hate to say it, but he learned his craft of managing under Arsene Wenger at Monaco because he went to Monaco from Spurs for his kind of final swan song before coming back to play a manager at Swindon and Chelsea. Ugh, dare I say it. But for Spurs, if you haven't seen, like I've said a lot in this, in this piece, go on YouTube, just type in Glenn Hoddle goals. You will see some of the most incredible craft and genius from a footballer that has ever taken part in the game itself. So that has been my top five. I should say some honorable mentions. Uh, Robbie Keane, come on. He was a class ball player. He scored a lot of goals for the club. Yes, he kissed every single badge of any club that he ever played for or signed for, but he scored some amazing goals, chips, volleys, and then the roly polies with the guns. Jurgen Klinsmann, couple of overhead kicks. Flair player, finisher, poacher, but also top player. Gareth Bale, moments of flair, moments of pace. He's an honorable mention. Dimitar Berbatov, the most laid back player ever to play for the club. But some of the goals he scored, just check out the four he scored against Reading. The one that comes from about 20 foot in the air and he just turns, lets it hit his foot and go into the bottom left hand corner. Total baller, one of the best signings we ever made and we made a profit, Daniel Levy time. And last but by no means least, Rafa van der Vaart. The only player in recent memory, in my opinion, who we've signed possibly until maybe Hung Min Son, where I've seen him before and played with him uh, or bought him on Football Manager as well and thought, why don't we ever make a signing like this? Why don't we make a signing? He plays for Hamburg, he's played for Hamburg. Why doesn't he come and play for Spurs? And then Levy gave Harry Redknapp a present. Rafa came along, had a couple of great seasons. Sure, tight hammies, never finished the game, but big game player, scored goals against Arsenal, scored games, uh, goals in massive games, great player. So that's been my top five Spurs flair players. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment section below. Put down who you think were the best flair players ever to play for Spurs. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. Hello, welcome to Spurred On. Now you will have seen Harry Kane and Ryan Mason playing in the England internationals, or at least on the bench a little bit. Uh, and the fact that they're included in the squad for the 